Hello, everybody, and welcome to Floor Planner. My name is Bob, and as I always say, I'm here for customer success. I'm here for you all, and today we're going to go ahead and talk about the new advances uh, to Floor Planner's platform that have occurred for the month of May 2023. Appreciate you all being here, and let's get started. So let's talk about where to find those new advances. When you're logged into your floor planner account, your platform, if you go to the upper left-hand corner where those four squares are up there, you can go ahead and select that. That's your profile tab. It'll tell you all about yourself. And also it'll gain the right-hand sidebar. In the right-hand sidebar, there's the news features tab right inside there that will identify the new advances. Um, the most current advance will be listed at the top. And if you hit the more button in the upper right hand corner of that box, you will be redirected uh, to a page that will go ahead and have all of the advances that have occurred in the past year. You can scroll through these, look at some history, see if there's anything you've missed. Uh, they're very quick reads to understand what's new and exciting in Floor Planner. Um, we left off last time down here talking about the different uh, column additions to the search for the different assets. And as of May, we have a new feature for the plant uh, category class, um, which has actually now been subdivided into more classifications. We'll take a peek at that. And then we're going to talk about style boards, style boards, magic layout, and style boards, and style boards, and how they're now being utilized as room styles. So let's go ahead and actually go back into Floor Planner and take a peek. We'll start with those plants. And let's just go ahead and open up a project for an example, a nice empty room right here. We'll just open up this project. And with the project open on the left-hand sidebar, of course, you have the little furniture icon over there, which is where your objects are stored for your furniture. Yes, and all additional three-dimensional objects. Um, that are not necessarily the structure of the room. So if we go ahead and select that tab, um, go down to the classification for plants, and yep, here we go. Yes, yeah, so you can still do a search up here for a specific name, uh, tree, fern, orchid, etc. cetera. Um, but now you have these subclassifications. These are new. So we can look for border plants or go ahead and look for cacti and succulents, uh, herbs, um, potted plants, even going down to shrubs and hedges. And of course, for your exterior, looking for trees. I think these new categories will certainly help you out narrowing down um, what you're looking for as you're utilizing uh, the plant three-dimensional objects. Now, beyond that, let's go and take a peek at style boards. Now style boards, um, let's go back to our home page up here in the upper left hand corner, go back to our original dashboard. And when you are here, the third icon down is your style board tab. And in your style board tab, hopefully you've had the opportunity to work with style boards, you know, they're mood board presentations. Um, you can create them as I've created this one as an example. This is mine. And if I go out there into the world and look for all, these are others that are out there in the world. And the style boards uh, certainly can uh, be populated uh, when you create new. You can put your materials in there, your colors of your paints, um, any of the three-dimensional assets that we were looking at earlier. Um, and again, this is, this is a mood board presentation, usually in the design process that this is in the early stages of conceptual layouts, um, but these have become much more powerful now. Um, as we've discussed before, room style collections um, that have been utilized to um, create an entire decor set based on room types can be associated with an empty room that you create in floor planner and actually populate the entire room. 
now that power of room styles is now associated with the style boards. So let's go ahead and show how this actually functions. I'll go ahead and go back to my projects again, and let's go ahead and open up that same empty room that has no identity to it whatsoever. We have not, oh, but it does have itself as a living room right now. Let's try and see if I could just do something with no room type. I'll just leave it as living room for right now. Um, doesn't have to have any type of association for a room type, but let's go ahead and see what we can do with the style boards. So we're actually in a project. We drafted out of room and we haven't populated it with any style. And if we go ahead and go over to our style boards, we can actually see mine the one that I've created previously. This would be all of mine if I created multiple style boards out there. Um, if I found a style board that I like, that I like to use on a regular basis, I have a little part up here that I can select, which would then go into my favorites as liked style boards. And you can also go in here and go ahead and look at other style boards that have been created by uh, room types and also even filtered by different brands. Um, that may have created style boards for your use also. So let's stay focused on mine as the example for right now. There we go. And with this board, if I want to go ahead and say, you know, I like this collection and I want to go ahead and have this decor inside this room, I can go ahead and take the buttons in the upper right hand corner there, left click and drag that style board right onto this empty room, let go. And now the collection that was the style board is now available to me over here on the left-hand sideboard, which I can go ahead and drag and drop these items independently into this room if I care to. Yet this style board is now associated with this room. So since the style board is associated with the room, we can go ahead and take advantage of the magic layout. Uh, magic layout will go ahead and take all these items and populate them inside this room based on um, different roles that we had assigned to these items in advance. So let's go ahead and hit magic layout. Now we'll go into the cloud. And it populates this entire collection inside that empty room for us. Going out there into 3D, take a peek, see what we got. It also will go ahead and assume the room type that was associated with that style board. Um, so we can change between living room bedrooms without even having to change the room type prior, like we used to have to do with room styles, just dragging and dropping that specific um, style board onto this empty room uh, will allow that to happen. So if we went ahead and said, well, let's go ahead and do a different layout in here, you know, we can go ahead and select that style board again and go ahead and run the magic layout and run the magic layout again. And again, this is just placement of the furnishings in different layouts um, based on algorithms. Um, it's not going to be displacing an interior designer by any means, um, but it definitely gives you a great starting point. And from here, you know, you can certainly, as you know, go ahead and make modifications, deleting items from here, adding from other collections and changing the layout specifically. It's just a very high speed way to go ahead and drop an entire decor set um, based on now style boards into your empty room. Um, if we went ahead and maybe looked for all style boards out there, um, maybe change this room from a living room to maybe something like a bedroom. You know, what are other collections that are available? And we can do these, uh, change these, base filter these by certainly, you know, different companies that are out there. So mentioned like Haverty's, Haverty's for bedroom search. And maybe I happen to like this coastal retreat. Um, I can go ahead and grab those buttons right there, drag that style board onto this room that already has a population inside of it. And there's the new collection over here on the left-hand side. And we could just go ahead and hit magic layout again. And notice that it did change the room type based on the style board um, that it was a bedroom. So it changed it out from a living room to a bedroom. We hit magic layout again. Of course, it will start 
changing the configurations with some different options that are out there. And it's just that simple. How fast we could go ahead and create our own room style collections that we're working with and or go to uh, someone else's room style and take advantage and utilize that design work that was done previously. So style boards, just you know, a quick note. Um, certainly this is a really, really cool new function as it was also previously with room styles, but let's go ahead and I talked about the roles that are associated with these items. So let's go back into the actual style boards that we were creating go back to my home page for a second, back to my dashboard. And inside my dashboard, we're going to go down to the style boards themselves, not just that one project. And in the style boards, let's go ahead and open this up. Actually take a look at the style board that I created previously. Um, the items inside your board um, can have these roles assigned, uh, assigned to them. So, you know, you certainly can go ahead and go into your furniture tab and find yourself maybe some new piece of furniture out there. Maybe it could be a plant or let's see, living room furniture. And maybe I want a bench. Let's go for benches. So if we want to add a bench to this style board, this mood board presentation, I could just go ahead and drag this bench into here. And there it is. Of course, you know, we can resize it, place it somewhere in the room. And that is my board. Of course, it's being automatically saved for us. And then we can go ahead and assign this style board to uh, an empty room. But the bench, hasn't been given any sort of um, role to, to work with the algorithms as to how these items are being placed inside a room. So we wanna go ahead and assign a role to it, which is through the Magic Layout tab over here. And inside Magic Layout, these are the roles that can be assigned to these individual items. Now I've already assigned roles to many of these previously, except for that new bench that we just dropped inside there. So if I say show roles, turn the tab on, you'll see the actual identifications of these roles. Like this is a uh, coffee table decor item. Uh, this is an end table. This is an end table lamp. Um, that's the intelligence that's been assigned to these items. This one of course has nothing on it. So if we start looking for something to assign to a bench, and if we do not have a bench, let's just go ahead and maybe assign it as an ottoman to be something a little bit similar. We can go ahead and take these, this role and actually assign it to that item. And now it's assigned as an ottoman. And again, this is, you know, not for labeling purposes when it drops into the 3D model, but actually for working with the algorithms to find a home, where, where is it best suited? Um, as I said, um, the magic layout will certainly not displace an interior designer, um, but it certainly helps to work with the algorithms to go ahead and assign roles as close to uh, the actual function of that piece. If for some reason there is not a role determined uh, that works close to or specifically for the item that you have inside your style board. Um, don't worry about that. Um, the items will still show in the left-hand sidebar when it populates. And if it doesn't place itself based on algorithms, you can always drag it in from the left-hand sidebar. Um, that gives you a quick overview of some new information about style boards and their functionality as they're going forward. I appreciate you taking a moment with me today to learn a little bit more. And hopefully I will get to see you again at one of our future live webinars, or we'll just catch you next month as we post the new advances that'll be occurring in the month of June. Appreciate it. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you.